What is going on guys and welcome back to another video here on YouTube. This is probably not going to be a very long one, but I do have some updates for you guys. And then we're going to get into a couple things with the current giveaway truck and all that. We got the wife's truck back from the insurance work and I will say this, it was definitely just more of them trying to commit insurance fraud than actually doing us much good because they charged us like, well, not charged us. And this is where it doesn't really bother us that much because we weren't really that affected. Um, but in any negative way, but they charged us only the deductible, which is normal for the insurance stuff. But they did fix the hood in the top of the cab and this fender, as far as I know, there is no more dents in it. No hail dents, no, no hail dents anywhere else on the truck, which was just the hood, top of the cab and this fender, maybe like a couple little dings on the door. But what's crazy is they build our insurance company for $7,000 in charges for the work. That is insanely ridiculous. And I'm fully aware that insurance, you know, usually will get billed more than a cash deal, especially when a company knows the insurance isn't actually gonna come out and inspect and make sure everything on the list is perfectly billed according to what they say they did and everything else. But like, it's just kind of crazy to me. Like when they sent me the huge list of everything that was supposed to be done to this truck, I was like, I mean, it's kind of cool that they're going to fix all that stuff. And I'm like, I just want the dents fixed. And so when I saw that they had billed our insurance $7,000 for her truck to get the hail dents fixed just on the top of the cab. And it was paintless dent repair too. Just the top of the cab, top of the hood, like one or two things on the door and the one fender. Um, I was like, for that kind of money, they must be like redoing tons of stuff in the truck. I don't know. And I get there and they like go through the whole list of stuff. And I'm like, do you guys just build them a ton more? And make up a bunch of random charges on there. She's like, well, it's insurance. We always have a way higher rate for insurance companies because we have to deal with going back and forth with them and stuff like that, which I kind of get it. But the administrative work, and they only had the truck a total of like two weeks tops. And half the time it was just sitting there not being worked on. I don't know if it should be that ridiculous, but I mean, whatever, it's, it's they're building the insurance. It didn't really affect us um, other than the fact that our insurance might go up now, but whatever we only paid the deductible and the dings that were there got fixed so moral of the story what needed fixed was fixed i just felt like maybe they charged our insurance way too much and we did just get the windshield replaced on the first generation dodge here and i'll be honest with you our plans were to completely tint the front windshield of the truck well when i say completely tint, i mean like the brow we we're going to do a brow across the front of the truck on the top half or top like 20 percent but I honestly don't think I want to do it now. Like now that I'm looking at it with brand new glass, the tint wrapped all the way around the back and the side, you cannot see the cab. Like you can't see through it as it is. And even from the front, you could, you could see your silhouette in there, but you ain't going to be able to make out anything incredibly well as it is with no brow or anything up on the front. Now that would be more for aesthetic look over anything else, but it is, I mean, it's just a way better piece of glass also too now it's clean it's not all you know sun faded and abused from 30 years so it's it looks really good you can see the difference between no tint versus the tint but since the rest of the truck has done five percent it really does look good without anything on the front i'm not a hundred percent decided on that but i did text our tint guy and I said, maybe we don't do anything with the windshield. I don't know. I'll let the people decide in the comments, but I'm like, it honestly just looks, it looks so good just having the brand new glass and the tent on all the sides. You really can't see through the truck anyways. And we weren't gonna do a full windshield. We were just gonna do a brow to kind of match how the OBS looked. But let me know down in the comment section below. Full windshield, just a brow, like 20% up on top or 25% or just leave it alone. And now for the OBS 7.3, Power Stroke XLT. It's an F-250, guys, and it is going to the state of Washington. Yes, this truck is headed out to the state of Washington to Mindy. Congratulations, Mindy. I already spoke to you on the phone. You already know the drill. You know the truck's gonna be getting shipped out here very soon and headed your way for you to love and enjoy. And I am so happy for you, and I am so thankful. To every one of you who placed orders to enter to win that truck, because again, without the orders being placed and buying super cool Trust the Government t-shirts like this, I actually just got a compliment on this at the courthouse and I was transferring the title over to her name. 
and uh, I was getting it and she's like, I really like that t-shirt. I'm like, well, you can buy one online. She's like, I don't trust websites online. And I'm like, cool. Well, then you can't buy one. <laughs> but anyways, um, so she was, uh, she was complimenting the shirt. But anyway, so the truck's going out to the state of Washington. I want to say, I don't want to pronounce this wrong, but it's Mokes, Mokes City, Mokes, M-O-X-E-E -E, City, Washington. And so it's, it's all the way out there. And uh, I'm, I'm super pumped for her. I think um, as far as I know, she, she drives a dump truck. She's got four kids and uh, she just decided to buy them some stuff. Like, I guess it's going back to school time. So she ordered them like, I thought I could be wrong. And, I, and I'm sorry if I'm wrong, but I thought she ordered like a backpack and then just some t-shirts and a hat and some other stuff. Like she bought some stuff for the kids and uh, she's like, yeah, I was having to fight them over getting to wear at least one piece of the clothing I bought. <laughs> and she's like, but we love this stuff. They like it. They got their stuff quick. We try to keep up with orders as fast as we can. I see the comments now that we're getting a lot of new customers. They're like, it's been like five days. I haven't gotten a shipping notification. Well, we still do keep up with incredible shipping times. Most people don't wait even two weeks now. Like way back, and I know with a lot of shipping and giveaway companies still, like two weeks is kind of like, the average or more uh, just because it is kind of a tough industry to keep up on everything because we're not like Amazon Prime where everything's just like insane contracts with shipping companies and stuff like that to keep their stuff prioritized we still have to go through line just like normal businesses shipping stuff out so it can be tricky but we are proud to say that we have an average order placed to shipped within five to seven days is our average wait time between the time you order and it ships out so that's pretty good um, given the fact that it is a very busy industry and it is kind of hard to keep up with shipping sometimes. But all that being said, congratulations, Mindy, on winning the truck. She already drives a dump truck all the time, apparently, and all that stuff. So she's good with the whole shifting gears and, you know, there's a t-shirt that goes along with the rest of that thing. That's where it's headed. She's excited about it. She's so pumped and I'm super happy for her and I am so, so thankful again for her place in the order and for everybody else that has placed orders to enter to win any of our trucks, not even just this one, but any of ours past, present, and the ones that are planning on ordering in the future as well. Thank you guys so much, you guys are awesome. But we do have uh, we do have some other stuff to go over here also um, that is not related to the trucks and the other super cool stuff. But man, just check this first and out guys. And another note actually, I will mention, when Mindy placed her order to enter to win this OBS, and she also entered for this truck just recently as well, because when we got notified the winner, I saw, oh, she also just entered for this one. But um, when she ordered for this truck, she placed her order during our 25X entry bonus week, which is live right now for this truck. And this giveaway ends on September 3rd, which means you don't have much time. I think it's like a hair over two weeks then the giveaway for this truck is over. It's a 93 four-wheel drive, five-speed manual, first-gen 12-valve Cummins that comes with five grand, and it is freaking sick. It is so clean, super mint. Everything about it is just awesome. It's it's a hard-to-find, rare truck, and this truck could be going to you for the price of a couple t-shirts or a hat or just a sticker or even just a VIP sign-up, which gets you entries automatically every month. Gets you our highest entry promo code automatically applied to your account. And you can get free shipping on all orders, $20 plus, and you can get discounts on everything. So take advantage of that while you can. And um, yeah, enjoy. Get in while you can. 25X ends on Sunday and the giveaway overall ends on September 3rd. We do have some other shenanigans going on around here these days. I've been doing some food plot spraying, you know, wearing masks and gloves and all that stuff. But we got a chain hooked up to the Moto 4, which is actually for sale right now. I'll tell you why. And then uh, we have it hooked up to the Coyote CS2210. Just to create a little more tug on that thing when we go to try to tip up this hunting shack that we just purchased. Actually, well, we ordered a year ago. It was just finished being built now. I'm actually built by some local Amish. And the thing seems to be about as solid as any freaking piece of um i don't know what you structure of any kind that i've had built i mean it's it's freaking stout and uh it's it's pretty legit and it's huge um it's not super tall i think it's like oh, about seven feet to the floor and then it's another seven feet ish 
on the interior height um, and it just hardly fit on the 14 foot trailer I mean like with an inch to spare front and back so pretty pumped about this thing and uh, you can see all my corn growing here that'll be on the hunting channel I'll be doing an update on that lots of corn and turnips and all that stuff growing we're gonna stick this thing right here on the back side this is our furthest back food plot right here so we're gonna stick it here so that way if we have any wind blowing straight that way all the way over to this direction we'll be able to hunt in this thing and be out of the elements out of the cold and out of the bugs and everything else so that's gonna be exciting um, i'm not gonna be pulling this up in this video but i will be hopefully in uh, one of my outdoors videos that's going up here but hopefully this works i'm a little bit nervous that it it might give us a little bit of a problem i did have this hooked up last night and what i was trying to do was pull it by this location here i had a strap over this section and that section and i was just trying to back it up slowly so that way i could tilt this thing up and then if need be i could use the bucket to stop it from you know like falling towards me at all like if it got wobbly but it's got a pretty big base on it and so what i'm hoping is that i can take this thing and i've got it pulled snug and take a little couple of zip ties on here as well just to put through here just to make sure that this you know if this strap would come a little bit loose in the process let's say it gets a little bit wobbly once it almost stands up the strap doesn't just come undone like unhook somehow and just let the thing fall um so we'll see if this works or not but that's why i got the four-wheeler because i tried to pull it up last night and it was just hooked down on the bottom which obviously would probably not produce as much leverage but when i had it like that it got the thing like halfway up but it started pouring rain and so the tires are starting to slip in the mud here and you know i stopped once it did that and then i just slowly lowered it back down but i'm thinking between the tractor with four-wheel drive locked up and the little moto four here with just a little extra tug to make sure that um this thing keeps keeps moving back as i need it with the wife on that four-wheeler i think we should be able to stand this thing up and like i said with the atv being plenty far away i don't have to worry about my wife getting hit and then with the tractor you know if i'm standing the thing up with the bucket facing it if i have to i can always you know use the bucket to break the fall from that thing actually tipping over on me if worse comes to worse that would be my hopes is that i would be able to you know tap it with the bucket to keep it from coming down on me at least that would be that would be the goal and the hope i might even throw the roll bar up just for the heck of it just in case um but other than that oh yeah i was going to show you why we're getting why we're selling the moto 4 i did pick up a honda rancher 420 and this thing is a freaking beast it's a 2016 model i was going to buy a brand new one but i told myself if i could get one and somebody will give me a deal for like four grand or less because they hold their value so freaking well the problem is nobody wants to sell them and when they do they went within a thousand dollars of the original price and so it's like a new one, 6,400 bucks. And a used one is freaking 5,500 bucks. I might as well just buy a freaking new one. At least then I have the warranty and other things, even though I probably won't need the warranty. So I found this one for 5,500, offered him four, and he said, absolutely, I'll take it. And I got it, and it's been an absolute blast ever since. And I used it to tow this thing back here down across the little ditch and through some other stuff. And I'm telling you what, these fully shaft-driven units these Hondas are just, they're just different. I mean, they're just hard to beat. Kind of like that Moto 4 back there. When you eliminate chains and belts that can slip, you get so much more machine and so much more usability, you know, for the power that's at hand on a machine like this. I mean, it's just phenomenal. It's just crazy. I mean, this thing, it's got to weigh a few thousand pounds. I mean, it's heavy. It's rough sawn wood. I mean, it's it's not light stuff. You can see how heavy the boards are. I mean, this thing is this thing is not light. You can see the post structures down low too. The ladder. I mean, it's all super heavy duty stuff. Um, and it's not a small shooter shack either. It's pretty big. So, you know, for that four wheeler to be able to pull that all the way back here through the, the ditch and stuff too. I mean, and up a couple small hills. That's pretty. It's pretty nice and all i had to do is keep it in the first gear and 
give it a little throttle it, it honestly was working very easily to get this thing back here so that's the update for the other shenanigans going on around here and i know i haven't been on youtube much a lot lately and there's good reason for that it's not like i i don't want to do it but things just kind of change over time and i'm finding myself more apt to spend time on other parts of our business that are you know more productive for what we're trying to accomplish and then more time with family i've got two kids and they're they're real young they're little kids and so i'm just kind of finding myself enjoying some other aspects of life that i didn't really take as much time and granted at the time i didn't need to take as much time for those things because they weren't really in the equation yet um but i still do enjoy doing the youtube videos time to time but it's just not something that i like really really get excited about as much as i used to and i don't think that's a bad thing i know people will comment like oh things change this channel's dead and i don't i don't really care about the views if i make a video it's because i want to and i think that it's good information for you guys or it's something i just thought was interesting but other than that i just don't do just don't do a lot of it anymore and i don't know if that's going to change and we're going to do a lot more at some point or not but kind of go into this phase of like want to do youtube i don't because monetarily speaking there's not a lot of benefits to doing youtube for our channel um and it never really has even at the peak of our channel you know like we do the most work and get the most views that we ever did it was like you'd make a couple thousand bucks which doesn't even buy the tires for one of the trucks you know so it's just kind of a it's kind of a wash doing the whole youtube thing and if i spend that same time working on other things in the business it's just more productive for what we're trying to accomplish and so just know that when i post a youtube video it's because i want to and i enjoy it i'm not like trying to force anything out there that i don't want to film so even like this one yeah it might not be anything crazy going on but it's something i wanted to film i wanted to update you guys with a couple of things show you some of the new cool fun little things we had going on back there and that's pretty much it anyways guys thanks so much for all the love and all the support i do appreciate you guys even if i don't film as many youtube videos i still appreciate you guys i just have other things i like to do now um so anyways guys thanks so much i'll catch you in the next video peace Wait, don't forget to enter to win that first gen giveaway on september 3rd peace